to Full Frontal. Last week, America's one-man white supremacist employment program managed to talk about his dystopian agenda using an indoor voice without mentioning his electoral college win or deporting anyone from Congress. Hooray! <laughs> For this astonishing feat, the pundits rained golden compliments down on him in the warmest shower he's ever had outside of Moscow. In his short political career, it's the best speech he's given. And I feel like tonight, Donald Trump became the president. Not only was he more presidential, he was a politician. Great reset button for him. A truly extraordinary moment. That was one of the most extraordinary moments you have ever seen in American politics, period. <laughs> is wrong with you? Question mark, exclamation point, rage emoji. If pundits set the bar for President Trump any lower, even Jeff Sessions won't be able to walk under it without bumping his head. Look, I know it's extraordinary that he learned to read something finally. I didn't think he could do it either. But you don't have to gush like he's a toddler who just made a boom boom on the big boy potty. Only one person on TV that night wasn't dazzled by a show of minimal competence. Not the Donald Trump that I've seen for the past 30 days. Explain. Where is that guy? You guys where, 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 is that, where, where is that guy that says what he wants to say, that, that is loud, that, that, that says everything is fake news? Where is that guy? Where, like that. I'm going to look for him. I'm going to look for him on Twitter tomorrow and see what he really thinks. Great job to the speechwriter, but I will see Donald Trump at 12 a.m. <laughs> truth, it sounds biased. You know, maybe cable news should just hire more black women. Except not you, MSNBC. We know you just sweep her out of the way to make room for whichever Roger Ailes harassment survivor pops out of your underground railroad next week. Sadly, presidential Trump didn't have long to enjoy his victory over his own tongue. President Trump sought to ride the momentum from his speech to a joint session of Congress last week only to find himself enraged by more leaks and suspicion besieging his administration. The president was steaming, raging mad. He is just as we wrote, steaming, ragingly mad. Ooh, for the love of God, don't make me picture President Trump steaming. <laughs> With a nervous nation starting to wonder whether Tiffany is the only person of Trump's acquaintance not talking to the Kremlin, the president did what any strong leader would, hightailed it to Florida faster than a Jewish grandmother in November. The first thing you have to understand is that Mar-a-Lago is sort of President Trump's castle, as we wrote. It's his safe space. Aw, Snowflake needs a safe space? PC culture has gotten way out of hand. You know, at this point, Van Jones's network should have just thrown the old countdown clock up there. President Trump tweeted on Saturday that President Obama had my wires tapped in Trump Tower just before the victory, yet he offered no evidence of this. Oh, that's new. White guy shoots himself in the dick, tries to pin it on a black guy. When has that ever happened? <laughs> To be fair, there's a good chance Trump fell asleep watching news, rolled over on the remote, and woke up during the wire. <laughs> Mr. President, that's not Barack Obama. <laughs> I mean, I get why you'd think Obama would tap a pa your phone. Just look at how angry he is and obsessed with you. He can barely stay up on that surfboard from all the rage and hatred for your administration. While Trump is flipping out on a daily basis, every picture of Obama looks like he's about to sip a pina colada, laugh, and paraglide off to a photo shoot for Essence magazine. <laughs> Apparently, the president's intel on felonious wiretapping was prepared by Steve Bannon's news pepe of record, reporting on a doolally radio host named Mark Levin, whose voices told him Obama is behind a silent coup against Trump. Solid. Yeah, just one of those classic coups where a president uses the might of the government to spy on an opponent and then doesn't release any of the information he found, lets the other guy win, and then isn't president anymore. Classic coup, exactly what that word means. Now, I mean, if you don't know Mark Levin, he's something of an Obama expert. Obama has an affinity for Islam far more than Christianity and Judaism. No question about it. The Muslim Brotherhood has infiltrated our government. It's called Barack Obama. Oh my God, and women's voices are shrill? <laughs> so, to recap, 
President Tough Guy got his feelings hurt because his special bridezilla moment got stepped on by drama between his two boyfriends. So, of course, he fished up a victimization narrative from the right-wing propaganda swamp and hysterically ugly cried it all over the internet, <laughs> forcing professional journalists to spend the next 72 hours talking to Mike Huckabee's daughter about whether the most scandal-free president in living memory is a bigger criminal than Nixon. It's bananas! Who would have thought our country would come to this? I will see Donald Trump at 12 a.m. Oh, right. Seriously, CNN, give that woman a show already. We need it. The other pundits are so eager to declare Donald Trump presidential, and in one way he is. Namely, when he spouts nonsense, it has immediate global consequences and makes us less safe because he's the fucking president. And if there's no one on his staff brave enough to tell their boss that there's only one P in tap, there certainly isn't anyone brave enough to tell him that Obama isn't running a coup. In fact, the president's entire staff appears to treat him like a dangerously strong show chimp that you have to bribe with Diet Pepsi so he won't tear your face off. He wakes up Sunday morning, however, and he's in a good mood because he thinks his allegations against President Obama were dominating the news. But he became unhappy later Sunday. Aides, though, tried to cheer him up by showing him the new travel ban, restricting people from coming into the country. Are we going to have to eliminate another civil liberty every time the president is cranky and won't go down for his nap? Oh, don't cry, little Donnie. Here, look. It's the keys to the private prisons where we're going to lock up all the undocumented immigrants. Oh, he likes it. We'll be right back.